What is up YouTube and welcome back to Bike Hub Japan. So today you're joining me on a, a bit of a rant. I've got to get it off my chest. I've been holding this in for quite a while now, but I think it's time to finally get it off my chest. So we're going to be talking about two topics today. The first one is the Kung Flu and the second one is basically just me encouraging people to do their own research. So on to the first topic. So the old Kung Flu, the old planned, uh, sorry, pandemic, which has been going on for years now, um, until this month hasn't affected me whatsoever. I have never been sick. I still haven't been sick. Um, I've never been on lockdown, never had curfews. And in fact, really the only thing that changed in this country um, as a whole, the only thing that changed was restaurants and bars and stuff had to close early and some of them had to close for a few weeks and even now some of the bars are not allowed to serve alcohol and they have to close at 9 p.m some of the bars are allowed to open are only allowed to, to sell a maximum of 300 dollars worth of alcohol per day things like that but in general it hasn't you know been a been an inconvenience to me or affected me in any way until three weeks ago um, one of the kids at my daughter's nursery um, tested positive for the Rona now that meant that my daughter's nursery had to close for an entire week which was a bit of an inconvenience because it also meant that my wife because she works in a hospital also had to take a week off work so the three of us were stuck in the house for a week and we were, were uh, receiving food parcels from the government because obviously you're not allowed to go out shopping and stuff like that and I just wasn't happy with that whole situation I found it a bit ridiculous really um, anyway the week came to an end it was uh, last a week last Thursday and then my wife's hospital um, said before you come back to work everyone in your household needs to have a PCR test so we went to have a PCR test somehow the only person who tested positive was my daughter now that means another week off work for my wife and another week off nursery for my daughter so she tested positive but no symptoms whatsoever she didn't have a fever she didn't have a cold she didn't even have as much as a runny nose yet she tested positive so this put me in a bad mood and basically we spent another week kind of go kind of staying inside but we, we went to the park a few times when there was no one there because everyone's at work and school so we sort of broke curfew a little bit i'll admit to that but as she was completely symptom free i think keeping her locked up in a fucking tiny apartment for two weeks is paramount to torture so yeah fuck it i'll admit it we went out we went to the park now today monday uh, so this video is probably coming out on Wednesday, but today's Monday took my daughter back to school for the first time in two weeks today and uh, The teacher met us at the gates and said oh welcome back. I'm glad you're all well now and Then he looked at me for a reply. So I replied well She's never been sick. So you don't need to say that Then he repeated the words. I'm glad you're all better now. How are you feeling? So I repeated myself, um, she was never sick, she didn't have a cold, she was completely, she didn't have any symptoms, mate. Then he looked at her this time, instead of looking at me, and touched her on the arm and said, I'm glad you're better now. So at this point I decided, right, just bite your tongue, just say, yes, thanks, thanks teacher. Uh, so I bit my tongue and I went home. Um, now the whole way driving home I was just thinking to myself, why the fuck? Can this guy not listen to what I just said? I just told him she wasn't sick. So why is he acting like she's just recovered from the fucking plague or something? And it just kind of pissed me off. And then when I got home, uh, had my morning coffee, had a ciggy, and uh, just looking through my phone, looking at what's going on on Twitter, checking out my YouTube feed, stuff like that. And I started noticing a lot of people hashtagging I think it was something along the lines of stand for Ukraine and the people who were hashtagging this to me are not 
politicos they're not people who know much about what goes on in the world for real and so it kind of just pissed me off that people are immediately jumping on the bandwagon to support something that literally they have no idea about now in this next part of the video i'm not going to tell you facts i'm not going to say to you this is true believe me because that would make me no different from the actual media um, so what i would like you guys to do before you comment or do the thumbs down on the video and call me like a a, a right-wing fascist or something that is probably you know that seems to be the common thing these days call me a nazi because you don't agree with, with with what i'm saying so i would just like you to sort of do what i did this morning just bite your tongue a little bit and do some of your own fact checking um so yeah like i said i'm not going to state things as a fact i literally just want to ask you guys questions to see if you know about the topic that you're uh you know effectively pledging an allegiance to <laughs> all right so yeah i'm i'm quite aware that this video is is not my usual type of video it's not a fun topic and it's semi-controversial and some of you guys might not like it i'm expecting people to unsubscribe for me that's that's fine that's fair enough um i've like i said i've tried not to politicize my channel because it should be about bikes and fun but yeah today just has put me in a bit of a ranting mo mode a bit of a alex jones type rant i might start hitting my fuel tank in a minute but all right so let's get on to it so first i'm going to start with a quote from mark twain so mark twain said back in the when was he alive i think it was the late 1800s maybe early 1900s he said if you don't read a newspaper you're uninformed if you do read a newspaper you're misinformed so this this whole topic of uh what the media says not being particularly impartial or the media having an agenda that they want you to believe is not a new thing it's been going on since time immemorial so just keep that in mind that people have been complaining about and saying that the press um, isn't necessarily telling the truth and that they might have political and financial backing from people whose whose uh, ideas that they're trying to promote in other words propaganda <laughs> so just keep that in mind i'm just saying that is a possibility I'm not claiming that cnn and fox and uh, nbc and the bbc are all complicit with some secret organization that's trying to take over the world but I wouldn't overlook it either so on to ukraine so first thing that i want to ask you guys is what do you think is democracy now i'm not going to quote the dictionary definition here but you know it's a latin word demo and crassy the same demo that people use when they go on a demonstration like the truckers in canada and australia it, that's a demo and crassy you know it's it's basically power so it means power of the people power to the people to me anyway right so that to me means that the average joe has a right to decide who runs their country and has a right to comment and express their opinions on matters of their of their country of their their citizenship their place they live they should be able to have a a word they should be able to help decide policy and things like that now second question do you think that ukraine is a democracy so in order to answer that question you need to do a bit of research about what happened in ukraine in 2004 and 2014 there was effectively a coup d'etat um, and you need to you need to follow the money and see how did this coup d'etat um, how was it financed first of all now I'll, I'll say this is a fact i'll say this is a fact to stage an effective coup d'etat you need three things first of all you need money then you need media 
and then you need a really good technique or tactic now I can say some stuff that's effectively declassified now but let's just say the CIA the Central Intelligence Agency of the United States of America has been involved in coup d'etats in numerous countries throughout this even well even this century but ever since it since it was um, founded let's just say for example Congo um, Iran Brazil Chile um, yeah just they're the ones that I know for a fact are declassified so I'll just stick to those now there seems to be a, a popular a popular trend with these these uh, so-called revolutions obviously they're coup d'etats but they all seem to have a, a nice name like the Rose Revolution or you know they've all got these names they all have exactly the same kind of methodology to them they all get supplied money by NGOs that means non-governmental organizations they have strong support from the media that is the people who are you know trying to overthrow the government they have very very strong support from the media then they employ agent provocateurs what are you doing mate are you going left or not yeah and they basically all follow the same kind of tactics so right what happened in 2014 in Ukraine to me looks very similar to all these other coup d'etats that had happened throughout the world that were effectively done by the CIA now I'm not saying that that's what happened in Ukraine but I am asking you to have a have a research have a check do a bit of reading and tell me what you think does it look similar now again I'm not I don't want to um, tell you facts here but you know facts that can't be substantiated anyway but here's a fact for you so the in November 2013 just before the uh, revolution or the coup d'etat on the 21st of November a brand new television channel was opened then on November the 22nd the next day another TV channel was started then on November 24th another TV channel was started brand new TV channels that were all sort of going along with the narrative that revolution is in fact needed with strong support for the people who were who were trying to overthrow the government so that that's a fact and that's not me uh, that's not conjecture you can easily check those facts 2013 November 21st 22nd 24th go and look at what TV channels started now where did they they get their money from the people who were uh, trying to have this trying to do this revolution this coup were doing that because they were sick of being poor and having their money so where did the money come from to start these TV channels I'll let you decide on that but you can be sure that there was NGOs involved and where there's NGOs that are involved <coughs> excuse me there's going to be some backing from Western countries so let's just forget that part so do, do a bit of research 2004 2014 what happened in Ukraine and then after you've read that after you've done those, that bit of research tell me do you think Ukraine became a democracy during and after the coup d'etat slash revolution personally I think no I don't think it has been a democracy and as long as things carry on the way they are I don't think it will be either but that's just my opinion obviously I would like you to decide for yourselves right so next thing like I said before you need money you need media and you need um, technique so media wise what exactly is going on right now in the West um, what are the mainstream TV channels and the websites all saying basically they're demonizing Putin right they're all calling him a Nazi and there's plenty of memes of uh, people putting moustaches the Hitler moustaches on Putin there's I saw one this morning Putin sat on a train and the ref his reflection in the window was Hitler um, 
demonizing people is another excellent tactic that people use when there is a uh, a revolution you've got to demonize the person that you want to overthrow so yeah that's just a regular tactic now let's look at our own countries before we start looking at countries that are not important to um, citizens like us like to, to what happens in Ukraine doesn't doesn't affect me in any way except that Ukraine has massive um, natural resources which the West won not only are we talking about natural gas they've also got a shitload of uranium <laughs> now rather than think that our countries are so um, concerned with the welfare of the citizens of Ukraine let's just think that they might be interested in the natural resources that they have there you know it could be that it could be that I don't know the cynical side of me says that a government the governments of the world that go to war in places like Iraq and Afghanistan and have millions of people killed don't really care about ordinary citizens they care about their bank balances and keeping keeping themselves in power so yeah that, that it could be that what do you think it could be I'm sure that um, a year ago most people who are listening to me talk now haven't even considered Ukraine to be an important country but now all of a sudden every man and his dog is sharing the hashtag stand with Ukraine probably without having any understanding of what a country Ukraine is so <coughs> excuse me I've been talking for a long time now so um, this whole comparing Putin to Hitler um, what do you think about Justin Trudeau in Canada what do you think about him bringing in the emergencies act because of the truckers that are trying to have a peaceful demonstration would you call would you call that a Nazi um, tactic would you call him would you compare him to Hitler I think um, I, I might do I might do it seems like a pretty fascist thing to do to me to freeze people's bank accounts and stop people from donating to a cause that they believe in and actually criminally charging them with aiding and abetting if they give a meal to one of the truckers who's freezing his balls off in the truck or giving them some fuel you can be arrested for that and they will they will prosecute you you can also be arrested and prosecuted for just attending a rally the demo that doesn't sound like a democratic thing to me um, but yeah you can make up your own mind about that and um, finally this whole Nazism thing again you need to do a bit of research about the uh, political factors that are in the Ukraine now uh, there are quite a lot of political groups in the Ukraine who quite openly use Nazi symbology in their flags um, their salutes and the way they conduct themselves so for Putin to say that he wants to denazify Ukraine and then people to call him Hitler seems a bit strange to me so again you need to just do a little bit of background checking on some of the military factions that are in Ukraine and when I say factions I'm not talking about some little group of um, militia that uh, live in a hut somewhere in the countryside of Ukraine this is a lot a lot of um, a lot of troops and who back in the day during the old revolution time 2014 these are the people who were possibly okay I don't want to state a fact there could have been used as the agent provocateurs that were beating and killing people in the demonstrations in the city of Kiev also check how many people died during the the demonstrations and the riots in Kiev and what kind of people was it that died fuck me I need a drink right I think that's my rant over basically what I'm just saying is before you start hashtagging and then donating money um, to to the Ukraine you really need to check who you're donating your money to and who you are actually pledging your allegiance to or standing with before you start you know hashtagging it and just trying to shove it down other people's throats do your own research now I know people are busy 
and me being a jobless bum I've got shit loads of time to trawl the internet and read old news reports and listen to videos of um, politicians and historians giving detailed analysis on the situation and a lot of people out there who have got full-time jobs won't have that kind of time to spare and so it's very convenient for you to just turn on the news listen to it and then form an opinion on that but you really should do your own research even going to websites like factcheck.com or whatever the fuck it's called you don't know that that really is a fact because you don't know who pays their bills so the only way to really get real information is to do your own bloody research now if you can't afford the time to do that and you don't want to do that then I would say keep your political opinions to yourself and just get on with life but if you have got the time to do that and you can do your own research and you're willing to listen to both sides of a story then more power to you so I'll just end by saying that I really do not have any political alliances I'm not on Russia's side I'm not on Ukraine's side I'm certainly not on the West side because I don't trust them for shit um, the wars that we've started and the wars that we've been involved in in the last even the last couple of decades have largely been based on false truths I would possibly say so yeah I would I think the only thing to take away from this video is that you just I would encourage you to do your own research okay rant over peace out boys and girls take it easy I think I need a beer tonight. Whew.